In 2019, I built a flintlock rifle. In 2020, I killed a beautiful whitetail with that rifle, and in 2021, I used that deer's hide to make buckskin for the first time. The process that I'm following in this video comes directly from the second edition of the book, Deerskins into Buckskins, by Matt Richards. I'll put a link down in the description to the website where that book is available, along with some of the tools and components that you'll see me use. This first step here is called fleshing, and involves scraping just the meat and fat from the inside of the hide. This part of the process comes after skinning the deer, and can be done with a fresh hide or one that is frozen and later thawed to use at your convenience. Removing additional tissue that is not flesh or fat will come later, so for now you just need to get the stuff that comes off easily. The next step is called bucking. This step is the longest but is really just waiting and involves the least amount of labor. To buck the hide, you need to saturate and soak it in an alkaline solution. Traditionally, this would be done in wood ashes, but I'm using the active ingredient potassium hydroxide directly. This can be mixed at a rate of 10 gallons of water to 4 ounces of potassium hydroxide. This amount can do 1 to 2 hides depending on their size and the container. The potassium hydroxide should be added to the water, rather than adding water to the potassium hydroxide because that can cause an adverse reaction. The hide should be fully saturated and submerged with the flesh side facing out for best results. Rocks can be added to keep it submerged, but it should be moved and agitated once or twice a day. This process may take anywhere from two to six days depending on temperature and solution, and when the hair is pulling easily from different sections of the hide, it's likely done. However, more accurate details can be found in the book Deerskins into Buckskins, linked down below. At this point, I move on to graining. Graining is simple in concept, but it's labor intensive and a learned by doing kind of process. You not only need to remove the hair, but you also need to remove the grain portion of the hide, below the hair. Luckily, this part is made easier by the previous step, as bucking causes the grain to swell and more easily separate from the hide. You don't want to scrape against the flow of the hair, only with it or perpendicular to it. Otherwise, hairs can break off and stay embedded in the hide. Always scrape towards edges and holes, and keep in mind that some areas like the neck will require a lot more force to scrape properly. You can see on the right where there is still grain next to and under the hair. This needs to be thoroughly removed from the entire hide before proceeding to the next step. So after that comes rinsing. The easiest method is to simply leave the hide pinned or tied down in moving water overnight. This removes the alkalinity and swelling from the hide. Don't worry too much about getting it a little dirty, just rinse it out when you get it out of the water later. Now on to acidifying. First, I'm giving the hide a vinegar bath for 15 minutes in 4 gallons of warm water and half a cup of vinegar. This makes the hide easier to soften and generally softer than if it was not done this way. You also get the benefit of skipping other steps. In addition to or in place of the vinegar bath, the hide can be soaked in ammonium sulfate mixed with warm water. The ratio is 1 cup ammonium sulfate to 20 gallons of water, but you only need enough to cover the hides you intend to soak. This can be done overnight, or in my case, I just left it for 8 hours during the day, stirring every couple of hours. While waiting for this part to be complete, I chose to gather punk wood for a later step. Punk wood is just rotted, slightly damp wood. It shouldn't be completely falling apart, but it also shouldn't be entirely solid. These characteristics will help it smolder, producing smoke rather than flame. Membraning comes next, and this part requires a re-scraping of the flesh side or inner side of the hide. The goal being to remove most of the membrane or loose fibrous tissue. Do as thorough a job as possible, but this isn't quite as crucial to get right as the graining. Because of the acidifying step done previously, the hide can now be left to dry completely, turning into rawhide. Once dry, it is ready for dressing at any future point. So with the hide mostly dry the following morning, I proceeded to dressing. There are many recipes for this, but I chose to use a couple dozen eggs in two gallons of warm water. The hide needs to be fully saturated in this mixture, which takes a combination of time and handwork. Any stiffer dry patches need to be worked by hand and soaked completely through. This dressing step is followed by wringing the hide, and it's best if you repeat the dressing after wringing out the hide. This ensures complete penetration of the dressing through the hide, and can potentially make your life a lot easier in the softening step. After dressing is completed, the hide needs as much moisture as possible wrung out of it. 
This helps expedite the following softening step. It can be done suspended over a tree limb above your bucket, as you'll want to save the dressing. This is best done with the flesh side out, folding the hide as shown. The goal is to form a folded loop through which you can pass a stout handle or stick. Then simply turn the hide in one direction, twisting it until little to no liquid is running. Untwist the hide and then twist it in the opposite direction just the same way. This process should be repeated, moving the loop around the branch to properly ring each portion of the hide. Then comes softening. This step can take an entire day by itself, depending on conditions and method. This is especially true in a large, thick hide like the one that I'm processing. You'll see I stretch the hide one way over the cable, and then the other way by hand. This is hard physical labor and best done with friends or smaller hides on your first attempt. I'm working the whole hide over a cable which not only helps to break and stretch the hide, but also removes larger bits of remaining membrane from the flesh side. I'll admit, after cabling this large hide, I think breaking over a stake or on a frame would have been easier work, with more consistent results. So to speed up the process, I simulated the non-existent breeze with an idling leaf blower, while working the hide with a round pumice stone. It's important to work the hide in all directions as it dries and not stop working it. If you do stop for too long, it will dry hard, and that's obviously not what we're looking for. The stone can be used while stretching the hide or while the hide is lying flat on the ground or on a table. Its slightly abrasive surface helps break and soften the surface of the hide both inside and out. Once the hide is completely dry, all the way through, you can proceed to smoking. This will make all the previous steps permanent, preserving the softened state of the hide for good. To do this, the hide must be turned into a tube with white glue or by stitching the edges together. One end of the hide should be left open and a skirt of denim or canvas attached to it. This helps protect the hide from dirt and excessive heat. To smoke the hide, we need a bed of coals contained in a low oxygen environment. I dug a hole two feet deep in the ground, then placed the remnants of my fire in the hole. The hide is suspended over the hole and this can be done in whatever way suits you best. With no unburnt wood or flame remaining, I spread small pieces of punk wood over my coals, covering them completely by a couple of inches. I then stretched the denim skirt over the hole, pinning it in place with rocks. This is by far the most enjoyable part of the process for me. I spent 40 minutes allowing the smoke to permeate the hide while enjoying a cold brew. Then I turned the hide inside out like a sock and let it go another 40 on the opposite side. This imparts formaldehydes into the buckskin to preserve it while also giving it a nice color. The amount of time spent smoking and type of wood used determines what your coloration turns out like. I hope you all enjoyed watching this as much as I did learning this ancient art. If you did, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Thanks for joining me today everyone. Catch you again soon.